Hello lovely people, welcome to another video. We are very nearly into October, which means it is pretty much now officially autumn. We are nearly in the spooky slash spoopy season and I need to start picking the books that I would like to read in the month of October. So obviously I would usually do fictionary to pick my TBR. However, in October, I like to do something a little bit different because we have Spoopathon taking place in October, which is a readathon running throughout the whole of the month. It is hosted by Spoopy Hull. I am one of the team captains along with Jade from JD Ray Reads. We are team the Harpies. Really, really excited about it. It's gonna be really cool, but I need to do my TBR a little bit differently because the prompts for this readathon are released throughout the month. So you can't really pre-plan which I'm quite excited about. So instead of being a TBR video, this is gonna be more of a video about books that I would like to try and get to in October. This list is quite long, so this isn't gonna be me saying I'm gonna read all of these books in October. These are just kind of some of the books I'm gonna be picking from. There's probably gonna be more books added into it as I see more books that other people are reading. I have so many books that I feel like I always want to get to that I save for these months because I feel like they're the atmospheric books to read during October, during the spooky season. So I'm just gonna throw these books at you, tell you what they are. I mean, I'm not literally gonna throw them at you, but I'm gonna tell you what these books are and why I'm excited to read them. It's quite a long list of books. I'm, I'm honestly daunted, but I keep having to remind myself that this is not my TBR. This is just a suggestion of the books I would like to get to. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm saying there's a lot of books here. There's actually 10 books, which now I've counted doesn't seem as scary. It's just a kind of tool stack. But I think because I've been feeling a little slumpy still at the moment, I am knowing that I'm reading less each month, just over the last month or two. And I think that that definitely is having an effect on my enjoyment of what I'm picking up and why I'm picking up certain books. So I'm hoping that October will kind of revive that a little bit for me because it usually does because I love reading these kind of books. So whilst it's not a great deal of books, I think just for me at the moment, I don't really know where I'm at with my reading, which is really annoying. So I hope that having this helps me a little bit. I'm not going to be going into detail about each individual book. I will just be kind of giving you a very small overview because otherwise we will be here for quite a while. But let's jump in with book number one. So the first book I would like to try and get to on my TBR slash not TBR in October is Hair House by Sally Hinchcliffe. This is a haunted house, gothic horror, isolated setting type of book. I think that this one follows one main character as she is in this strange new house set during the autumn and the winter. The blurb says the first few days of autumn in it and I'm very excited for that because that is, as of filming this, where I'm at the moment, we're in the first few days of autumn. So I'm really excited to be able to get to this one, I hope. I think this is one I feel like I can only read during these seasons because it seems to be so atmospherically centered around them. So I think this has an isolated house type of setting because the characters get snowed into this house as some creepy things are happening. It sounds really atmospheric, sounds really cool. It's definitely giving me Star of Acre vibes, which is a book that I read, I can't remember if I read it at the end of last year or earlier this year because it was like, a new year cusp read for me but that definitely gives me similar vibes to this with the isolated setting the house element the gothic creepy nature of it but also just the literal cover it's got a kind of similar vibe to it with the hair on the front the white cover it's minimalist it's that kind of atmosphere to it so i'm excited to read this one i really really hope i can get to this one in october or if i can't get to this one in october i feel like november would also work because i think it does cross between the autumn winter period which obviously november is still within autumn but it kind of it's towards Christmas so it's got that kind of vibe to it. I feel like this one will work generally for the latter part of the year so I'm excited for this one. Next up is a contemporary romance. It is The Ex-Hex by Erin Sterling. This is a fantasy romance following a woman who curses her ex-boyfriend and then nine years later that curse is starting to have some very negative effects on the town that she lives in. I've heard very good things about this one. This one was quite popular last year and I have again saved this one to read for this time of year because I think I got this as a Christmas present. So I've saved this one to be able to read now. I'm hoping that this one will be quite a fun light relief to other darker books that I have on this list because I think a lot of the ones I've gone for are gothic slash horror in some way. So I think this one hopefully will help me balance it out. It's quite short as well. So again, I'm hoping this will kind of be a bit of a respite of a book and just allow me to have a palate cleanser before diving in to more of the horror on this TBR. Another book I think is gonna be a little bit of a palate cleanser for me for this month is Liz Medding's The Sad Ghost Club 2. This is the second book in this absolutely beautiful graphic novel series. This talks about mental health, it talks about anxiety, it talks about companionship within mental health and how that can be 
be a real aid and how it can be a very isolating thing and this is the journey of somebody who feels isolated within their mental health and then finds a friend which is why there's now two ghosts on the cover of this one i read actually there's three ghosts there's a third ghost see i read the first one last spoopathon last october and absolutely loved it oh there's three ghosts they're all friends i really don't know too much about this one i haven't looked at the blurb previous to just literally looking at the back now and I don't really feel like that's the blurb that just gives us a vague little insight but the first one was really fantastic it was very cute whilst also talking about something that can be a really difficult thing to talk about and I think it combined the two things of it being a difficult topic but also adding it in a really friendly way and very approachable way and I really like that about this book so I'm really excited to read the second one and again I think this is going to be a palette cleanser because it's going to be quite an easy fast read it's a graphic novel it's a really cute format it's just got a lovely story to it and I think it's a really important story so I'm really looking forward to reading this one I'm pretty sure this is a guaranteed read for me in October because I always want to have a graphic novel on my TBR when I'm doing a readathon because I feel like it just helps me achieve some of the prompts and be able to move through the board for this readathon so hopefully I can get to this one. Now we start getting into some of the darker books. There is quite a few more horror -y books on my TBR. I basically did a horror haul slash horror shopping trip last year and it was such a fun video to film. I'll, I'll pop a link up here if you haven't seen it. It's, it's about a year old now but it was a really fun video to film. Went shopping in Oxford to try and just get horror books and horror books I did get and quite a few of these are from that haul because I got them near to the end of October. I don't know if I read any of them last year but I have been waiting patiently to be able to read them this year. So one of those books is The Nesting by CJ Cook. I think this is gonna creep me out. The reviews on the front say truly scary, best read with the lights on, strange and creepy. I am scared but excited. <laughs> This looks very atmospheric, very dark and very creepy. It's a stuck in the woods kind of setting with not good things happening. It's an isolated house that is in the woods. We're following a woman who is working as a new nanny to two children and there is a darkness creeping closer in the woods that she has to protect the children. But the bottom line says Lexi must protect the children in her care. But protect them from what? I think the kind of books and films that you know there is a threat and you know it's a very scary threat but you don't know exactly what that threat is are very clever. I think that it's a really good way to do it. Something like The Quiet Place or The Village do that really well where you kind of get flickers of the threat but you never fully see it until a lot later on if at all in that journey and I think that is very clever and definitely hooks me in so yeah I'm, I'm I'm scared <laughs> but it sounds really really good. I do like being scared. I don't know how much I'm gonna like being scared when I'm alone in my flat at night but we'll see. <laughs> then I have Eeny Meeny by MJ Aldridge. This is a thriller series so I don't think this one's gonna be as scary however it does have a creepy monster element to it as well. This follows a girl who has emerged from the woods after being lost for quite a while. I don't know how long she's been lost for, but she emerges barely alive with a story that is beyond belief. And this follows a detective who has to track down this potential unseen monster before it kills more people. It sounds like a kind of thrillery horror crossover. I honestly don't feel like this one is quite as appealing to me as some of the other ones I have on my TBR, so this one isn't gonna be like right at the top. I would be really interested to see if anyone has read this what your thoughts or thoughts are on this because I haven't really seen much about this one online but clearly I picked it up for a reason the Daily Mail on the front says it chills to the bone I mean it sounds interesting and I'm excited to try and give all of these a go well look at all of them some of them hopefully a lot of them a go hopefully I'm really hoping October is a good reading month for me last month last year sorry last October was such a good reading month like I think back to that reading month as a very atmospheric very good reading month and I want that again for this October if at all possible. This next book I honestly don't even really know what it's about and I've read the blurb several times and I've read it several times just now and I'm still not 100%. It's one of those blurbs that just kind of doesn't really pinpoint what the hell is happening in the story and that's okay because it leaves me intrigued. This is The Last House on Needless Street. This is by Catriona Ward. This follows a family who have some secrets. A new neighbour moves in and that is in some way a threat 
because their secrets could come up. There's also a dark forest at the end of the street, and then the bottom line says it's not what you think. I honestly, I don't even know. It's like these are multiple blurbs smashed together. The reviews speak very highly of it. None of the reviews really say it's scary. Someone says it's a chilling masterpiece. The Sunday Express says it's a chilling masterpiece. The Times says it's horror with integrity, but then the other reviews are like spectacular, unmissable, truly captivating. I don't know. I have seen this a little bit about online. I haven't read anything this exciting since Gone Girl, says Stephen King. I mean, it's got to be good, right? It's a top 10 bestseller, one of the most extraordinary thrillers of the year. I'm, I'm hoping for good things. I like a thriller. I like a thriller mixed with a horror. I'm intrigued. I, I don't know what to expect, but hopefully I'll find out. This next one, one of the reviews on the back says it transcends genres. So again, this is one I don't really know what to expect from. This is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This follows our main character who is really into cult horror films. And she, I think by the looks of it, something weird is happening in her town and she's using that horror film knowledge to analyze and pick apart what is happening in her town, which is not a good thing. And I think that this then puts her in danger. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Again, this is one I really, I don't know what this one's gonna be about. I think this is kind of a slasher film in a book, whilst also trying to analyze slasher films as a book. I think, I don't know. It looks like it's gonna be very clever. The reviews on this one, again, speaking very highly of it. I think a lot of the time, I do kind of base what I should be expecting off of the kind of words the reviews use. I think it helps sometimes more than the blurb does because I think a blurb can often suck you in and be written obviously very tactically, whereas the reviews are the things that are really gonna give you the atmosphere of that book. And I know that everyone's gonna have a different reading experience. However, there's a review on the front that says, it's a tale that will terrify you and break your heart at the same time. One of the reviews on the back says, a frantic, gory, whodunit mystery with an ending both savage and shocking. Apparently an easy contender for best of the year it left me stunning and applauding. I mean, it sounds really good. It sounds very intriguing. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be quite bloody. Again, if you have read this one, please let me know your thoughts. This is one that has also been on my TBR since last year. So I've waited a while to get to it and hopefully this will be the month that I do get to read it. This next one I bought for one reason <laughs> and one reason only, and I would like to read it for that one reason. This is The Man on Hackpen Hill by J. S. Monroe. I don't even know where I saw this book. I, this might have been a Waterstones buy, I don't know. This is actually set in a familiar location to me, which made me quite interested to read it. It's set around an area that I spent quite a few years of my life, so it's an area that I am a little bit familiar with. So for that reason, I wanted to pick this one up, but generally the plot I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm really intrigued to see where this goes. I don't know if this is a paranormal alien style story. The tagline at the top of the blurb says, in a world of lies, the search for truth is a deadly game. Which it follows what is essentially crop circles left in a field. It describes them as strange mathematical patterns stamped into the earth. And this follows a detective who is looking into this because there is, has been a dead body positioned directly in the center of all of these shapes. So they're looking into this and are digging quite deep into this and are confronting a reality of their own past and a world in which nothing is as it seems. So yeah, I really, I really don't know, but I wanna read this mainly because of the setting. The atmosphere does sound cool as well. Again, this is one that I don't think is necessarily like the highest up on my TBR for October, but if I can get to it, that would be awesome. Okay, the final two books are the ones I am most excited about. I haven't deliberately saved them till last, but I am really, really hyped for these two. I mean, I'm hyped for all of them, but these two especially. Okay, so this next one is Reprieve, and this is by James Han Matson. Now this is actually my Patreon book club pick for September and October, and I am really looking forward to reading this one. This is a horror book set in an escape room, which I think sounds so interesting. It follows a group of people who I think are in the last stage of the escape room when somebody breaks in and kills one of the contestants. It then goes back and examines the path of each person in that room and how they got there and how potentially these things all led to the death of that one contestant. I think it sounds really interesting. I think it sounds like it's possibly a reflective novel at the same time as being this, not necessarily who done it, but like, how did this happen? What 
events led towards this one specific event. I think it sounds really interesting. I feel like this one will be quite a good one for discussion, hopefully, within the Patreon book club pick, because I feel like there's going to be quite a lot of morally grey characters, which I love. I just think it sounds really cool. Also, this edition, this is the Waterstone Special Edition. Again, one that I bought last year. Most of these books are probably hauled in my horror video from last year. So if you want to see the actual video where I buy these and more of my thoughts there, then check out that video. But yeah, this I think sounds really, really interesting. I love this edition and this is definitely one that I will be reading in October because it's my Patreon book club pick. And finally, I am so buzzing to read this book. I bought this last year and again, have saved it. I am putting too much pressure on myself for the amount of books I have saved. I think I need to allow spooky season to spill over into November as well because there is a lot here, but this is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I think this looks absolutely fantastic. The format of this book is truly phenomenal. If you haven't seen this, let's just take a moment to appreciate this. So if you are familiar with the Ikea catalog, you will maybe think this book looks a little bit familiar to you. This is laid out essentially like an Ikea catalog. It's absolutely fantastic. I think this is so unique. I am so excited to be able to read this one. I have read the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix last year, and that was a really interesting, weird book. So I'm hoping this one gives off the same kind of vibe, but this is a haunted house story. But instead of being in a haunted house, we are trapped in this furniture shop that is very similar to Ikea. I know no more about it than that but I am so excited to go on the journey of this book. I think this will be one of the first ones I pick up in October. I might try and do a reading vlog for this one just because I think the format is gonna be super interesting and just make it a really fun reading experience. So this is the last book on my TBR, not TBR, for October. Obviously, because I don't know what the prompts are gonna be yet for Spoopathon, it is really difficult to set a TBR, so this is very much a guide slash suggestion of the books that I would like to pick from. I'm hoping that I can manage to fit these ones in. I'm really excited that the prompt drops are gonna be like split throughout the month because I feel like that keeps me on the edge of my seat with what I'm gonna be reading and trying to fit things in. I think it adds a whole other layer, which is quite good fun. So I'm definitely hyped to be doing it like this. I'm sorry if anybody does follow along with Fictionary and uses that to create your TBR, I will be doing it back to normal like beyond this month, but I just thought it was gonna be too difficult to kind of intertwine the two because Fictionary like, relies on certain prompts anyway. And if I don't know the prompts for Spoopathon yet, I f it was just gonna be a bit of a mess. And I thought this would be a little bit easier for me to try and work out what I was gonna be reading in October, hopefully. <laughs> I will be doing dedicated reading vlogs for each week or attempting to do them for each week because I do have a couple of other things happening in, on, in October, hopefully. So I'm gonna do my best to do weekly vlogs. So actually saying that, I was saying about doing a dedicated reading vlog for this. This will be hopefully one that I feature in one of the weekly vlogs anyway. So that is the plan. I'm really excited to start reading these books. I feel like I've been waiting for so long to read them that it's cool to actually finally be able to. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please do give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you're hoping to read in October. If you're taking part in Spoopathon, if you've read any of these books, let me know. I would love to know your thoughts. You can also subscribe to see more of my face on your feed and also all the videos I'm gonna be doing reading said books. You can also find a link down below to my online shop. I just launched some new Lightroom filters for autumn. I'm so excited about them. I'm doing a sale at the moment at the time of filming this for 20% off. If you would like to get 20% off, you can use the code autumn is here. I'll pop a little text here with that and that gets you 20% off anything in my shop including all the new filters which I am so hyped for so if you want to give your feed a little autumn revamp that is all linked down below you can also find a link down below to my patreon if you did want to take part in our book club read or just generally live shows podcasts all the fun stuff it's all linked down below thank you so much for watching keep smiling and stay positive